I am Lawrence Chuno, and this is Doing Jazz. Hello everyone and welcome to Doing Jazz. My name is Lawrence Chuno and this episode is with violinist and composer Meg Okura. Meg is a distinguished musician who has been decorated with several awards and nominations, including a 2015 Grammy Award nomination. Her body of work comprises several albums, working with household names like David Bowie and Diane Reeves, and leading the New York City-based Pan-Asia Chamber Jazz Ensemble, just to mention a few. Meg Okura's latest album, Ima Ima, is a collection of well-thought-out and very well-executed compositions that stem out of her role as a mother. Each song on Ima Ima tells a beautiful musical story and takes you along on an exciting adventure filled with surprises. You will notice that my conversation with Meg was done before the release of Ima Ima. However, the album is now available for streaming and purchase on all platforms. The song playing in the background is titled Black Rain. During my conversation with Meg, you'll hear the songs Ima Ima, a summer in Jerusalem, and a night insomnia. Towards the end of our conversation, you'll hear the song Blue in Jade. After listening to this episode, you can learn more about Meg Okura by going to the website of the show, www.doingjazz.net, and you can listen to more episodes of Doing Jazz by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, or any of the available podcast vendors. While on iTunes, please rate the show, leave a comment, and share the show with your loved ones. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I present Meg Okura in your face. Okay, Meg Okura, welcome to Doing Jazz. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for agreeing to do this show because I course. was actually surprised when you you're like, okay, I can do this show, and I I would I didn't know you would be available. You I'm would have thrilled. The time. Actually, I don't live too far away, so. Oh, where do you live? In Harlem. Oh, okay, yeah. where in Harlem do you when, live? Uh, to Hamilton Heights. Hamilton Heights. Oh, okay, closer. Yeah. Actually, more north. Nice. Um. You released two albums. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, not, well, one is out. The yeah. other one will be out in May. May, in May. On May 13th, Mother's okay. Day. Okay. All right. So I want us to talk about both of them, but I actually want to focus on the one that's coming out yes, um, in May. In May that, because that's your solo project. So let's start with the trio. Well, solo, it's a large ensemble. Project. It's a large ensemble, but <laughs> it's, it has your name on it. It's, it's your name. Mm-hmm. Um, so how about we start with the trio one? Okay, yeah. sure. I, can you talk a little bit about the project, about who is involved in the project, who is sure. the NPO trio? Okay. And sure, so NPO stands for, um, for Newsom mm-hmm. and Pilk and Okura. So Newsom is for Sam Newsom, soprano saxophonist, and P. Pilk is Jean-Michel Pilk, wonderful uh, French-American pianist, mm-hmm. composer. Um, and O oh, stands for Okura, <laughs> yeah. myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is entirely improvised. And it's from it's a live recording. Mm-hmm. It was just one concert, no rehearsal, no you know sheet music or parts written, but just based on one concert uh, um, that took place. I believe it was... 2016 mm-hmm. April 2016 April at Stone I had a residency at the Stone okay. for a week and this was one of the con- one of the 12 concerts I believe mm-hmm. live concert and yeah. I happened to um, record the concert and and when I listened back yeah I thought this has to be out 
Oh, I see. And so, um, so I, we decided to, um, you know, make this live recording mm-hmm. into a, a CD. So the first six tracks of the NPO Trio Live at the Stone mm-hmm. CD is um, was one long take, one long song. Yeah. But for the purpose of um, CD, I had to cut into you know sections. Mm-hmm. So so I somehow divide into six sections mm-hmm. so there now they stand they you know they could stand on yeah. as um, each track mm-hmm. and I had to put titles mm-hmm. and then the last track I last segment of the concert I didn't um, you know do that so yeah. then that one is 18 minutes long so, <laughs> so, you know it's a, so it's a you know it's a concert and mm-hmm. we didn't know you know we didn't pre-plan anything so mm-hmm. it takes it takes some courage mm-hmm. some believing self believing in yourself and some knowledge of um of the, the whole concept of um uh jazz music or the whole mm-hmm. concept of uh, classical music to be able to say to two of my friends hey i'm going to we're just going to go on stage without rehearsing mm-hmm. without sheet music actually, how did that come about so actually it doesn't for us it doesn't take courage because this is what we n- normally do naturally yeah. meaning mm-hmm. that so the preparation is yeah. the past you know few decades i would mm-hmm. say for me it'd yeah. be four decades uh, of preparation right mm-hmm. so we are all uh, in some ways over prepared to give a concert because our knowledge, each of us mm-hmm. have had so many decades of um, learning, mm-hmm. being exposed to so many different kinds of music. Mm-hmm. And, we, you know, we studied um, all kinds of things. So mm-hmm. um, so we were able to channel so many different sort of genres of mm-hmm. music. And for myself, um, I, as a violinist, yeah. I did not come from a jazz background. Mm-hmm. I of, was I used to be a concert violinist. Mm-hmm. So I spent the first few decades you know, really studying classical music and performing. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I um, branched out to, to different kinds of music. Yeah. Um, so, um, and, you know, John michel Pilk and Sam Newsom, they are all, you know, both composers themselves. Mm-hmm. In, so when three of us play together, it's more like three composers composing together simultaneously oh, okay. while giving, you yeah. know, being sensitive and giving uh, um, room mm-hmm. for their creativities. Mm-hmm. So um, for this concert, we, we it, there was no fear. There was no yeah. awkwardness. It's just very natural. But I you, have to, easy, you have but to be trust. You have to trust. Tr- oh, completely. Exactly. I have no <laughs> doubts in those two people yes, at all. Yeah. And they feel the same way about yeah, it. Yeah, and it takes a, le- a certain level of preparation. 40 years of preparation, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know. So I throw something yeah. more like that sounds like me, uh, Bartok or Stravinsky and they react right away. Nice. Boom, 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 come back. So it's, yeah. it's really refreshing. And so that's, you know, that's sort of who I am um, mm-hmm. as a composer. You know, I approach it organic, yeah. organically, mm-hmm. but... It's all based, rooted um, to the music, mm-hmm. t- different music that I've studied yeah. long yeah. time ago, for a very long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So shows. I spent a, um, a while listening to the upcoming album, mm-hmm. Ima Ima. Yes. Right. Um, it gives me this feeling of invitation to an adventure Mm -hmm. that is what that is just that is how i feel about Mm -hmm. that's my personal reaction Mm -hmm. you know uh because it's like the whole album tells this beautiful story and at the same time each song is its own story each Mm -hmm. song could start out soft and then go hard and then come back soft and then become bumpy so each song is like a ride by itself um that's how I feel. That's mm-hmm. my own natural uh, mm-hmm. uh, personal interpretation mm-hmm. <laughs> of the album. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a few songs that mm-hmm. I relate to um, mm, okay. for now, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but I will let you talk about the album. Then I'll talk about the songs. Okay. <laughs> so, um, this you know, story, yeah. sort of, um, I my compositions are... 
you know, not so academic. I don't, you know, really approach it, it that way. Mm -hmm. Though I use techniques and knowledge that I have, but I usually have some kind of, you know, emotion and story that I want to convey. Mm -hmm. But um, so um, story is the right, you know, the right word, I think. I really want to just, you know, let it tell a story. And I also want to feel authentic and I want to, I write yeah. music that I enjoy, I would enjoy listening I, to. I, so I, I see kind that. of romant, I use music for my own like romance. Mm -hmm. Like I just want to enjoy this fantasy world nice. in my own head while listening. So that's how I approach it. And if I was able to maybe paint it, because I, I kind of visual person. So mm -hmm. I, have specific visuals to sound like i do have synesthesia oh wow so when i have perfect pitch so since mm -hmm. birth every letter every note had a, a, a color right mm -hmm. so um so um so that's probably related to yeah. how i approach my composition i, I just can't sure hear a, a pitch without color mm. <laughs> So I don't know. I, I you know I have never been like di diagnosed, but when mm -hmm. I read the you know those materials, I know you know, the medical journals, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I know what I have. Mm. <laughs> so, mm. but, but this is your field. Maybe yeah. you can talk about it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you can diagnose me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe later on. <laughs> so, so um, that's that's um, and this these um, the reason why it's called imaima. Mm -hmm. Is um, ima means uh, mom in Hebrew, okay, and now in Japanese. Mm -hmm. So I am now a Jewish mother. Mm -hmm. So um, these seven compositions were co composed um, between, say, uh, two and a half years ago. That was recorded, mm -hmm. and um, conception of my daughter oh wow <laughs> so you know start when studying was she born? that so she's seven years old so okay. you know it took a, a little while mm -hmm. to actually complete the album i mean mm -hmm. it was recorded two and a half years ago mm -hmm. but it's just you know there are a lot of interruptions which i talk about in the liner notes mm -hmm. that you know as a mom you know i enjoy being a mom immensely but at the same time there are a lot of you know, constant interruptions so um to you know, go through this whole process of finishing an album yeah. was not easy because involving 10, pe ten pe pieces, mm -hmm. including myself, mm -hmm. um, musicians, it, and yeah. the whole process mm -hmm. just takes a little longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Oh, nice, nice. The title track, mm -hmm. the Ima Ima, um, it's one of my favorite, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, Again, it starts out soft and mm -hmm. <laughs> very inviting, and then it takes you places you didn't know you're gonna go. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about that one a little bit? Like the p compositional process? Of, of, of the, yeah, the compositional process and what inspires you to... Okay, so I guess for this one, I started with the main melody mm -hmm. and I usually work at the piano mm -hmm. and um, and I wanted also wanted it to be... Um, undeniably jazz so mm -hmm. that was something that i had in my mind besides mel i wanted melody to sing mm -hmm. but also i wanted to to put harmony that harmonies that are you know jazz and that's something you know what the feeling that you're on like on a swing set or um you know going on a roller coaster like that's the kind of feeling i like to get when i hear music mm -hmm. so that was sort of for this um uh, composition was my goal to kind of have that sort of yeah. feeling 
you know, or butterflies in yeah. your stomach. And then, um, and then I actually I have a co- confession. So the in the whole introduction part, that, um, a lot of people um, have commented they really like how I composed it. Mm-hmm. But I actually play every note on the piano as an improvisation mm. and i transcribed it wow um afterwards and mm-hmm. put the flute at the, at the you know on top so it, it's note for note transcription mm. Mm. <laughs> i you know that was my improv yeah, but that's, so that's, um, that, so it's it's you know it's kind of cheating but at the same time if you think about it my mm-hmm. you know other trio recording of yeah. um you know mbo tr- trio all live performance it comes from the same place anyways mm-hmm. so improv- whether it's improvisation or composition it comes i try to write organically from my stomach yeah, yeah. um instead of really um trying to have like any kind of agenda or something mm-hmm. from my head mm-hmm. i just want that's why i feel that I need to train myself. That's why I take piano, you know, jazz piano lessons, mm. you know, composition. So when I, when it's time for me to create, I don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. It's just those knowledge. I want it to come organically, naturally from, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. from my stomach. Nice. So that's how, nice. how, how I nice. um, approach. Hmm. Um, another one is a summer in Jerusalem. Yes. It's it's romantic, isn't it? Yes. It I'm is. married, so I have no rom. <laughs> oh, I should not say that. I love my husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, I want you know. Once you have you know you're you're married and have a child, you just yeah. uh, you know you can't really um, have those uh, you know you can't have romance outside. Mm-hmm. So, um, but those feelings never go away. Like I have you know those, I still feel. I still want to feel butterflies inside. So this is my own version of um, like a romantic novel. That, mm-hmm. But I don't know how to, you know, write a book. So I use music to um, to you know write a story, tell a story that mm-hmm. I want to read, and and the music you know, enhances it. I feel that you know this is exactly like the kind of romance I want to experience experience and mm-hmm. it's, so this is about um, um, two young lovers mm-hmm. forbidden love in Jerusalem mm-hmm. you know Arab and Jew and falling in love and that's you know that kind of feeling mm-hmm. that, that that you get when you're in love yeah but then it the situation's uh, difficult this you know I wrote this in 2014 when a lot of my colleagues or several of my colleagues were in Jerusalem mm-hmm. that, or in in um, Israel that summer and that you know there was just bombing going off sirens going off all the time so um, that really affected me as a mother because I just couldn't imagine leading children to you know, shelters mm-hmm and hearing sirens just that just that really shocked me yeah but then you can have um you know romance so this is sort of my like hope for peace like Mm -hmm. um you know ose shalom you know um song of peace Mm -hmm. so nice nice. through love through romance Mm -hmm. yeah that's i got the feeling when i was listening to it i got the feeling of uh of some cha- chaotic beginning mm-hmm. and then g- going into the car maybe with somebody with a loved person and just yeah. riding in the <laughs> summer <laughs> that's the feeling i got yeah that's mm-hmm. the picture i was seeing oh, when great. i when i was good. listening yeah good, good. a night insomnia yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes i like that one too thank yeah. you yeah like it it encompasses different rhythms. Yes. Uh, it starts groove. It starts yeah. like a groovy, and then it goes mm-hmm. to like some Cuban six eight kind of thing, mm-hmm. and then and also yeah, waltz. Yeah, waltz. Jazz again. waltz. Yeah, jazz so, waltz. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, night insomnia, this chaos, right? Yeah. And then just like constant interruption. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. how I feel sometimes about mm-hmm. um, motherhood, mm-hmm. but why grieve about it why don't we just you know enjoy it right because okay. through uh, 
hardships through difficult times we grow, we all grow mm -hmm. and you know hopefully we can um, embrace mm -hmm. challenges yeah. so we can all grow and mother uh, motherhood has definitely been that way for me so I'm embracing this constant interruption craziness and insomnia yeah. used to be a problem when I you know grow, growing up mm. I couldn't sleep but now I can sleep anywhere <laughs> <laughs> you, you sleep whenever you get it <laughs> I, sleep, I, I sleep so well so yeah if you have you know if you're suffering from insomnia mm -hmm. best thing to do is to get married and have a child. Have a child. <laughs> then you can sleep so well. Anyway, you can sleep in the car, on the yeah. plane. No problem. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Okay. All right. You are listening to Doing Jazz with Lawrence Chuno. This episode is with violinist and composer Meg Okura. Her new album is titled Ima Ima and is available for purchase and streaming. Okay, Meg. <laughs> yes, we're back. Where are you from? Yes, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm originally from a small town called Omen in Tokyo, oh, yeah. Japan. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get to how you ended up where you are now, but I yeah. want to go there very, very, very creatively. Mm -hmm. But now I've told you what I want to do, so it, it's, it won't come out creative anymore. So <laughs> 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 I wanted to ask, how did you start playing music? How did I? Okay. And when? At what S age? So interesting. Um, my mother was an amateur musician. She liked music. Okay. She liked the idea of music, but she had this tragic... Um, accident when she was a baby she lost a part of her finger so this mm. it wasn't possible for her um mm. uh to you know pursue music yeah. professionally and also back that well she was she is also a devout protestant christian mm -hmm. so she kind of accepted her life you know it was she wasn't meant to be but mm -hmm. her children she wanted her children to to serve the Lord by, um, you know, with music mm -hmm. in church, play you know, music in church. So mm. that was, and then she also discovered, even though she wasn't a professional musician, she discovered perfect pitch in all of, all three of her children. She tested me. So she would play a, you know, a note on the piano. Oh no, a, she will actually play like a glass, you know, like or just have anything that yeah. has pitch and ask mm -hmm. me what note it is. And wow. I tell and then she goes to the piano and check it. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's right. So, so she discovered our perfect pitch. So she thought, okay, you know, my daughter should play the violin. Yeah. So, but she thought that would be a useful thing. Mm -hmm. and I said, well, I want to become a composer. And she said, no, girls don't become composers. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I. This is why I've done a lot of different things, and I ended up where I ended up. But mm -hmm. basically. The way I'm living today yeah. is a lot different from what my parents had imagined, but exactly who I was supposed to be. Mm. But it just took so many, so many years yeah. to get here. Mm -hmm. But I think this is how who I was born to be in mm -hmm. a way. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually happy that I could, I have the freedom to become who I was supposed to be, mm -hmm. but I was pretending. I it took me a long time to get here be, mm -hmm. because I had to. I tried to be somebody else mm -hmm. for many, many years mm. growing up. So, wh who is that somebody else that you were trying to be? So, my parents were <laughs> really. I mean, they are still um, devout okay. Protestant. I see. Yeah. So okay. They bec became first generation Christians when, you know, after World War II, mm -hmm. a lot of. Um, missionaries came to japan mm -hmm. so they became christians and for you know whatever reasons i i could suspect i think my mother is going through that hardship of you know yeah. missing uh, parts of her finger mm -hmm. and my dad's i think he just wanted to learn english for free but <laughs> but they were practically the only christians in town so they oh. married each other okay and so um uh, 
so you know they were still kind of figure figure out how to be Christians, you know, how yeah. to be Protestant. Yeah. You know they they learned science at school, right? Mm-hmm. But they became Christian Christians later in their lives. Mm-hmm. So later than us, we were born into this Christian yes. home, and you know we were taught all these um, myths. Mm-hmm. Can I say that? I'm mm-hmm. not sure. And we believed it while they were still kind of figuring out. Uh, that they were. I don't think they were quite sure because mm-hmm. they deprived us. Uh, you know, as children, mm-hmm. were deprived from experiencing anything that was Japanese. All the festivals. Yeah. They were just. They uh, considered it to be pagan. To be pagan. Or more religion. Buddhist more or Buddhist. Okay. Uh, Shintoist, because yeah. we were not allowed to attend any of these yeah. uh, ceremonies or yeah. go to the temple or anything mm-hmm. like that. So I w- we were deprived from Japanese culture. Yeah, in Japan. In Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and we yeah. grew up practically with a lot of missionaries' children, Americans and Germans. Mm. <laughs> so, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see. I get it clearly. Yeah. So it's but, yeah, it's but very that, weird. But but that that has con- that actually mm-hmm. probably contributed to making you search for the true self. That that's you true. Ended I used up to becoming. be very. I mean, I was yeah. philosophical at yeah. age five, nice. six. I had a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. So wow, um, and then you played and you went to school for music in Japan. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I started playing the bi- piano and the violin at four yeah. and I auditioned for a music school at five. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. crazy. It's all crazy. Let's stop but this interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's anyway. very, very intimidating. <laughs> no, 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 not like that, but um, also I think after World War Two, yeah. people, you know, I mean, those, my parents were, you know, lived at the time, everything was just changing and growing. So yeah. they had, hopes for their children that mm-hmm. what you know wasn't possible for them mm-hmm. they said they grew up on powdered milk mm-hmm. provided by the americans mm-hmm. gross right powdered milk oh pa- pa- <laughs> no? it's, okay, never it's not a gross no, okay 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 that's powdered milk okay. it still exists okay. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so that but that's just so hard to believe yeah i see today yeah. just i mean the the fact that it's provided by the americans as maybe as relief that's the that's yeah. the difficult part to swallow but i think there are still it depends on the type of powdered milk okay. but there's still some <laughs> different yeah. types of powdered I mean, milk they were yeah. they said they got American chewing gums from Ameri- American mm, soldiers. Yeah, I see. It's I see really interesting. Yeah. They, they grew up in a very interesting time. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. so they they had you know they were probably just more eager, more willing to yeah. let their children um, dream and travel yeah. and nice. open and just discover something that you know that were possible for, mm-hmm. for themselves. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. nice. So, um, when did you move to the U.S.? I moved to the United States after I graduated from Japanese um, high, uh, conservatory okay. for high school. High school. And okay. I, instead of pursuing um, a, a, a university level at, okay. at the same school, yeah, I wanted to come to America because I thought I was Amer. I mean, I wanted to be American. <laughs> Growing up, yeah. watching Sesame Street, yeah. I, like, I, you know, I wish I was born. Um, you know, I, I, that was something I always felt. You know, mm-hmm. friends who are children of missionaries, yeah. they just, they just, they were different, yes. and they seemed so free. Yeah. And I never <laughs> really fit into the Japanese society, so um, I really just admired. Mm-hmm. you know the, the american culture yeah. but those so. were those were the people you interacted with growing up anyway right. Right. <laughs> so your parents so, yeah, were kind, remember, of, I remember the kind dance- of contributors to the confusion <laughs> <laughs> i remember dancing square dance at a christian camp you yeah. know <laughs> so interesting kind of crazy. <laughs> so mm-hmm, that, yeah i, I really see. I love American humor. Yeah. I love yes. just the freedom to yeah. talk to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to care. You know, you didn't have to be polite. Yes. <laughs> I, I really love politeness and, ex- mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. 
respect and enjoy when people apply to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I guess I want I like the freedom to be able to mm-hmm. approach anybody and talk to anybody. Yeah. So that's that's why we probably live in Harlem. You know, <laughs> we we just. We like meeting different kinds of people, people. Yeah, and yeah. and J- Harlem Japan is becoming it. more of that now. Oh, like it's, it's like everybody yeah, is vibrant, very yeah. very vibrant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I share what you said about American humor. Like when I was growing up in Nigeria, that was what I noticed too. I noticed I like the self deprecation in mm-hmm. American humor. Mm. Um, even though British humor is kind of more self deprecating, but American humor mm. has I- enough, quite enough mm-hmm. self deprecation, which I didn't think it's common in Nigerian humor. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you could, like you say, be free enough to know that other people are human. They are not necessary. You respect them. You give them enough respect, uh, maybe your elders but at the same time you don't need anybody to remind you that they are human that you mm-hmm. can make fun of them that you can play <laughs> with them that you can just talk mm-hmm. to them yeah. you know and that's something i noticed in american culture mm-hmm. so i totally concur with you on that yeah, yeah. i felt like i belonged here yeah, yeah. long before i was before you- here <laughs> so so but i use so i kind of use music mm-hmm. to move here oh, okay to yeah. travel around all over the world. Music is something that allowed me to do everything I wanted to do. Possible. And then I, yeah, made it possible. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, okay, I like, I like to music, mm-hmm. but music was so much work for me. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So, may, since you worked so hard at it, may as well use it. And that, that worked out really great. When yes. I was 16, I was the concert master of the Asian Youth Orchestra. So, wow. I led. Wow, hundred people from nine different countries, and I got to be the bonus at sixteen. And they were older; the most most of them are older than yeah. me. And I was a soloist, and then I got to meet the king of Malaysia, the king, you know, the, all these prime ministers and the, mm-hmm. all these people that you know. I, I, you know, at nice. the time, I just didn't understand anything. I didn't in, knew. I did see. This is the propaganda, right? I didn't mm-hmm. really know the his, historical background of. Um, you know, World War Two, how yeah. the Japanese treated the Asians. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, you know, we would go to a museum and I would be like crying because mm-hmm. I, this I was in a show, you know, and mm-hmm. those kids traveling with them showed me. You know, they they told us what they learned from their history book mm-hmm. and what we. So anyway, so. I could. I got to travel. I got to spend a lot of time with yeah. people who didn't come from my own culture. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, 16 on, it was just, I just had to Mm -hmm. use music. Yeah. And you've, you continued doing that. Like you've worked with a lot of people. You've worked with Mm -hmm. some very big names. I was looking (laughs) them up and you've worked with Diane Reeves. Mm -hmm. You've worked with David Bowie. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) David Bowie. I really owe my Americanness to him because... Mm -hmm. British David Bowie is the one who um, one of the several people who wrote the recommendation letter for my green card. Mm. So um, what I owe, what category? I can relate. What category? Oh, so of course it's yeah. the extra extraordinary ability. Ooh. Right? Of course. <laughs> um, yeah, the top. Nice, you know, you yeah. have to be the top two percent yeah, of the, the awesome, field. Yeah. So that was that was so hard. You don't need an employer. Like when I applied, I didn't need an employer. I don't think it was the. I don't think mine was the O visa. I think mine was. It's it's a it's it's a low it's one step lower. <laughs> yeah, with your PhD. <laughs> yeah, <whatever. Okay>. but <laughs> I, it's one step lower. Is that I don't think it's extraordinary ability. I think it's um, exceptional. It's okay. exceptional ability. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but I had to write oh and write God. and write and write, and I got like I had to get like eight le- different letters of yeah. recommendation. But right. you, I'm sure, just one David Bowie no, letter. No, no, I got actually. You know okay. what? I I don't want to. Drop names. Yeah. But John Zorn did one. Wow. Philip Glass did one. Uh, Regina Carter did one. Nice. Did one. It, yeah, nice, right? That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's so, but, um, but another thing is that I knew that I had to get a green card in order mm-hmm. for that, I need to prove it. So that motivated me. Yeah. To really um, take every opportunity seriously. Yeah. And not necessarily for money. But for 
um, things that could go onto the application mm-hmm. folder that was this thick, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I really, uh, I was that mo that yeah that helped me constantly work harder. Work harder, nice. Yeah, nice, nice. And the thing with hard work is that after a while you realize. This is actually h- how much I'm supposed to be working because the harder you work, the more you discover the difficulty yes. involved in whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. The more you discover how hard what you're doing is mm-hmm. and how much seriously you need mm-hmm. to take it. So mm-hmm. hard work is good, but it could drive you crazy sometimes too if you just focus just uh, only on work. So mm-hmm. I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, I have a question about composition. Yes. Your composition, when I listen to it, mm-hmm. like you said, it's organic. But at the same time, I could tell that it just comes freely. I'm mm-hmm. not saying easily, but it comes, it flows out of you, you know. Right. So my question to mm-hmm. you is, for other people struggling with composition, what one advice can you give to them? Oh. I'm not so sure, but mm-hmm. I think for me, the reason why it's easy or I, I enjoy it is because I spent first 20 years of my life just mm-hmm. studying. And, you know, as a classical violinist, you have no freedom, right? Yeah. So music was inside, but I had no outlet mm-hmm. to, to express myself. I was basically playing and practicing dead white composers pieces dictated by the conductor who is also you, mm-hmm. know, uh, you know white male you know yeah. not that there's anything wrong with being a white male mm-hmm. but um uh, it, there, there was um no outlet for me. so just once i allowed myself yeah. for things to come out and i also had have had lots of pain in my life just mm-hmm. very difficult life i've had very difficult childhood mm-hmm. so you can channel that you can yeah. use music mm. to heal and just you know so that's it's not an advice mm-hmm. but this is like one area i feel that my pain and difficult experiences yeah. are not completely wasted because in order to really experience joy and bliss you mm-hmm. have to have had some yes opposite right yes. otherwise and then which do i prefer um they're both good mm-hmm. flat good life like mm-hmm. average life is mm-hmm. good and also up and down is also good mm-hmm. you know and mine happened to be sort of just extreme high and extreme low mm-hmm. And and also how you take it, right? I yeah. probably experience in yeah. a way that's more extreme emotionally. Yeah. But um, um, we can as a as an artist, as a musician, as a composer, I can use, I can channel yeah. those difficult times and you know, like passionate romance, mm-hmm. you know, into bring that into your yes. music. So that I that. See. For me, that works. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, does it makes sense to me. Answer my, like, yeah, your it question? answers. It answers completely. What I'm getting is that mm-hmm. you shouldn't separate your life experience from the music right. because it's, your life experience should inform your music and use everything you've you've gained from your life and 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 let it speak in the music. Right. Yeah. Also, for me, mm-hmm. because. Um, because I've spent so so many years yeah. not doing what I wanted to do or what mm-hmm. not know yeah not not knowing or not doing, mm-hmm. so both, um, I had to use I had to accept myself I yeah. had to find my own identity, mm-hmm. um, and I was able to discover that through music, mm-hmm. so, so everything is kind of intertwined. But also you want to be efficient, mm-hmm. you don't want to separate like you so. I'm just using, I'm being efficient, I'm taking advantage of mm. everything I have instead of looking elsewhere, looking outwards to yeah. fi- go find an inspiration. I don't really need to yeah. do that. Yeah. Just, you know, using everything that's right in front of right me front or that's of inside yeah. of me. That's how I feel like I'm using something that's relying upon my experiences, what I've already seen and experienced mm-hmm. and using that for, for, for music. Nice, nice, so. nice. Let's take another break. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
All right, we're back. Okay. All right, Meg. Yes. The last before we went on break, you were talking about we were talking about compositions, mm-hmm. and we you kind of talked a little bit about challenges in life. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to continue in that line. Um, I'm sure to get to the level you are now, you must have encountered some failures because all we see is a success we go on wikipedia hmm. we read all the success hmm. we go on your website we see all the success mm-hmm. we see the albums a lot of mm-hmm. albums two at once <laughs> you know <laughs> success success mm. there has to be some failures you know uh, yeah. is there anyone the that regrets. stands yeah regrets yeah is there so, anyone that stands out uh that you want to talk about and you want to you how you learned from it because regrets and failures are there for a reason to, to help us learn and, and grow. Right. So my biggest regrets mm-hmm. are not, mm, it's sort of, it's a little bit cultural, yeah. but not knowing my true potential mm. and not pursuing, not starting earlier. You um, started at five though. No, but I was, I was a classical violinist. It's okay. almost opposite of being a composer. It's being a jazz composer and improviser. Yeah. Um, so. But hold on. <laughs> I'm going to stop you. Okay. <laughs> Do you know the amount of discipline? I mean, you mm-hmm. know the amount of discipline mm-hmm. it takes to right. be a composer mm-hmm. and the amount of discipline it takes to be a good jazz musician. Right. Mm-hmm. And starting as a classical uh, a musician, I mm-hmm. think it helps. Doesn't it help with being disciplined? Doesn't it help you to focus on what's on the sheet music and really learn the sheet music instead of having that natural tendency that jazz musicians have to just solo, to just uh, improvise? Mm. You understand what I mean? I'm not so sure because I could have started composing at okay. four or five instead of thinking that oh, girls can do <laughs> you know, girls can can't do that or yeah. um i could have you know pursue like jazz pianos you know much okay. earlier mm, than and then okay. but instead i became a concert violinist playing mm-hmm. concertos written by you know again mm-hmm. those wonderful amazing composers i i mean i i love yeah i learned so much from classical compositions but learning that way you know it's Mm -hmm. sort of it was external for me also you know growing up in japan Mm -hmm. learning classical music Mm -hmm. um yeah there are lots of discipline and it's so painful and (laughs) but i couldn't really find joy Mm -hmm. or just pure like bliss in that process or even performing it really wasn't until I started concentrating, giving recitals in churches mm-hmm. um, that, um, um, you know, that I could touch people in a way that, yeah, you know. Yeah, I see. I see but, what you're saying. But, you know, I wanted, but at Juilliard, actually, yeah. one of the, well, several of the professors insisted mm-hmm. that I become a composer because I was, one of the professors said that he, it was the talent he hadn't seen in 29 years of teaching wow. at Juilliard. So nice. I said, okay, there are a lot of great violinists, especially yeah. at Juilliard. There are so many amazing violinists. Mm-hmm. And I was not told, told those kind of compliments from, mm. um, you know, Juilliard yeah. professors on the violin. I was good, good enough to be, be performing, but mm-hmm. uh, not like amazing talent. So when those things were constantly um told to me people you know those you know julia professors were saying that to me it's like maybe maybe i should consider becoming switching my Mm -hmm. my focus to to maybe i should consider it right at Mm -hmm. least think about it yeah but um i but i still couldn't go there because i still belonged to my parents Mm -hmm. they were paying the tuition they were paying for my apartment right mm-hmm. so i really couldn't go there because yeah. i couldn't go to my parents and say um i'm not gonna play the violin anymore mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. the kind of sacrifice that they paid for me to study the violin mm-hmm. was huge so it took me decades 
to make that decision to actually pursue what I wanted to do. Yeah. So that's one of the regrets that okay. I have because I, um, yeah, I just, I was living for my parents. Mm. So, so, and also, I guess, you know, my form of faith that Christianity yeah, brought yeah. us that faith kind of kept me yeah. be the being a good daughter to your mm-hmm. your parents mm-hmm. and you, my parents came first yes, more than yeah, myself yeah <laughs> so and then that all changed yeah eventually obviously, mm-hmm, obviously. so now i'm uh, a, at the know. point it has to change <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so yeah so that's and the, another regret that i have is um more personal mm-hmm. um also personal um, social skills maybe that I did not learn mm-hmm. uh, my culture didn't didn't focus I think in Protestant growing up Protestant yeah. uh, in Japan we were taught to be honest and then also we have to be different from the secular world mm. we had to be so we were discouraged from being good becoming good friends with anyone who weren't Christians. Mm. So that was that yeah. was hard because we yeah. were 0.2% yeah. of the Japanese population, mm-hmm. right? Protestant. Mm-hmm. So very small. So, like, <laughs> yeah. so that was um, very negative. Uh, that had a very negative yeah, effect on would, me socially yeah. because that really shields you from, yeah. Yeah. you know, most, I mean, in, especially in New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, instead of now, I'm I'm Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I did not want to be that anymore. I see. So. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Those are, those are also, I made a lot of mistakes be- because I didn't. I wasn't taught those skills, social yeah. skills. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So I see. I see. And and I think I think we all we all have that part of us that kind of impede certain things that we do but in your own case i like that you're aware of it and when i hear your music i feel like it informs your composition in a way you know and i can i can hear it like the way your music goes to different places each song Mm -hmm. it's like a journey it goes to different places it's never flat and it reflects something it's somebody who has had a lot of experiences (laughs) and who acknowledges and owns those experiences and uh, uh, intends to use them for good that could produce uh, such music yeah who are your influences musically that's a very interesting question because um oh who do you let me ask you this way who do you listen to that you you enjoy listening to (laughs) now um now yeah i and you listen to my colleagues. Okay. But I feel like I don't listen and listen to enough music. Okay. Um. Yeah, I hear lots of silence <laughs> at home. Right. I don't drive. So right? inf- I don't drive. Yeah. So nobody drives in Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> so who are your influences? I, um. So this is what I've been told. Yeah. Um. And I think it's true. Okay. Recently. Uh, I've been told Pat Metheny and it's kind mm-hmm. of oh probably true mm-hmm. Rich Sakamoto okay undeniably Adina, Ma- and, and, and uh, Rich Sakamoto yeah so um, and Maria Schneider okay right? so uh, these are you know, and but Pat, Pat Metheny wasn't an obvious one but of course right I and I did listen to a lot of you know, so-called fusion and you know, even smooth jazz yeah. back in the 1990s. Mm-hmm. Um, and also Bartok, Stravinsky, I've been told, of course. Um, and so, yeah, the, and lots of um, Debussy, Ravel, mm-hmm. um, Tchaikovsky, the Russian yeah. nationalists and, yeah. and French impressionist mm-hmm. composers are probably... Yeah, mm. they they just reach, they come to my, it touches my yeah. my me in a way that other music, other classical music, you know, mm-hmm. like Mozart or something, doesn't mm-hmm. do that to yeah. me. But you know, like yeah, 
Borodin or something yeah. in Russia. I mean, it's one one time I was actually asked if I was Russian. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> I mean, who knows, right? Yeah. <laughs> but because um, we are, well, Russia is yes, huge. Yeah, so. Russia is huge. <laughs> um, but uh, so it just certain kinds of music touches me. Mm-hmm. So the reason why you know we had. Some melodies, you know, quote, quotation on mm-hmm. NPO Trio album yeah. from Yiddish songs is because Yiddish songs, you know, um, there's melodies that has major and minor chords in the same melody, and it's just you don't know if it's sad or happy. Mm-hmm. That kind of music yeah. really does that to me. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, so this, yeah, that's mm-hmm. probably why, um, yeah, I like that you know that kind of music mm-hmm. apart from the the violin mm-hmm. you play erhu yes okay which other instrument do you play no just just erhu i mean uh-huh. i don't really i'm not def, i'm definitely not i mean i practice you know p- jazz piano for yeah. my composition okay and i used to be a church organist mm-hmm. and pianist yeah growing up mm-hmm. um so Arhu, the reason why I play the Arhu mm-hmm. is because um, when I first started the Pan Asian Chamber Jazz Ensemble, yeah, I wanted to incorporate you know world music and jazz and classical together, mm-hmm. and so that was my idea. And I, I also after the after tr- touring Asia with yeah. Asian Youth Orchestras, um, it just kind of changed my. My life, I really kind of fell in love with the Chinese culture. Mm-hmm. So even though I'm Japanese, I wanted to I wanted to incorporate incorporate some of the Chinese sounds into my music. Mm-hmm. So I actually hired a an Aru player to play to record one of my my pieces um, called Afrasia. Mm-hmm. It's African and Asian. Mm-hmm. So and which is actually a, a kind of hit on Spotify there, yeah. like. A lot of listens. Yes, yeah. Um, so anyway, so, but I could not, I wanted to hear the melody, mm-hmm. the sort of pentatonic sounding melody played mm-hmm. on Arhu. And I got a traditional Arhu player from China to to play it. But then the rhythmically was African. So, mm-hmm. mm. yeah. You know, she couldn't do it. Oh. After so many weeks, and like I was trying to help her yeah. figure out, it just didn't happen. So I maybe I'll learn how to play it, mm. and I can make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought a wow. I bought an arhu, mm-hmm. and then I you know took lessons. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, my arhu playing sounded like the violin mm. because but it's is only. Two, two, two strings, strings right? that R means yeah. two in Chinese. Violin is... Violin has four strings. Four, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it sounded like the violin because yeah. it's the years. Yeah. It's not the technique. Okay. So in order to make myself sound more like more, more like Chinese, more like Arhu, yeah. I had to go to a, a real authentic teacher which, mm-hmm. you know, in Queens. I went to study with a, a Chinese teacher who barely spoke English. Mm. You know, so... And I learned Chinese repertoire. Mm-hmm. That's how I can make yeah. the Arhu sound like Arhu. But it's so it's not funny. I yeah. sounded like European mm-hmm. violin when I played the, first I, played the Arhu. Uh, Arhu. Wow. <laughs> but you 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 sounded you sounded like a musician though. Right. So <laughs> yeah, she said, it's... "Well, <laughs> the, my teacher said, Meg, you play Arhu, but you don't play Arhu." <laughs> 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 that's funny. <laughs> so, so that's why I needed a teacher. So mm-hmm. I, I studied with him for mm-hmm. for a little while, and so that was okay. I wanted to touch on two things that you mentioned that, uh, or one thing that you mentioned that um, that has been in my head since you talked about uh, not f- your parents saying that girls are not supposed to be composers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is interesting, and which has some. Uh, I don't want to say truth to it, but if you look at the number of composers who are recogn- recognized, mm-hmm. uh, not a lot of them are female. Right. The one, the 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 profession that I think that I've I've hardly seen a woman do is uh, conducting. I don't see 
female conductors. <laughs> there are a lot of female opera singers, and most of them are great musicians. <laughs> there are a lot of female violinists and musicians. A lot of them composers, are yeah, a lot of great composers. musicians, but I don't see women conducting. Yeah, it's my my old friend May May An Chen. Okay. Now she's doing very well. Okay. But um, other than that, um, so I don't believe this. Yeah. But this was long time ago. I heard heard uh, uh, one of the reasons mm -hmm. is the boobs. Can I say boobs? Yeah, you can. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> it gets in the way. You get, what? <laughs> That is silly. But I don't that know. doesn't it's make a, any sense. Okay, yeah. so but that was one. Yeah. You know, who knows? But yeah. maybe, maybe some most women don't want to become, com Con you know, conductors. conductors yeah. You know, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no. I mean, I conduct my own orchestra yeah. when we perform. But um, maybe that's just not something that a lot of women want to spend time mm -hmm. doing because yeah. there's just so many. There are so many other wonderful occupations yes. that we could yeah. choose from. And mm -hmm. then conducting, yeah. <laughs> hmm, you know, you have to be crazy to want to become conductors. Conductor. Well, no, well, I'm just joking. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know. Okay. So. Okay. I see. I see. But I don't know. I mean, yeah. there could be many different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, well, there are a lot of. Female musicians killing it yeah, out there. Composers yeah, composers too. Composers, a lot of yeah. The composers <laughs> I listen to yeah. are female, yeah. and they are just. And I think there are advantages mm -hmm. of being female. That certain kind of sensitivity. Yeah. And um, yeah, just expression. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there is a. The, the, I mean, I like the feminine side of you know, yeah, uh, jazz composition. Yeah. So and they're killing it mm -hmm. totally. They're doing it. They're doing so it. Yeah. so. Good. We're gonna conclude with uh, a little game. I call this game "Turn Up Mute." All right. I'm gonna give you two options. <laughs> the one you, the one you're feeling now, the one you like at the moment, you turn it up, you know. And the one you're not feeling, you mute it, you know. And it doesn't mean that the one you muted. It doesn't mean that you don't care for it. It just means that at this moment. This is how I feel. I'm going to choose this one. Are you going to quiz me on current um No. No, 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 don't <laughs> okay. worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's it's easy. It's um it's something you know, but it's not a, it's not an easy game. <laughs> Let's okay. put it that way. Okay. Okay. Um Rich Sakamoto, right? That's his name. And Maria Schneider. Which one do you turn up? Which one do you mute? At this well, moment. Maria turned turn up because okay. it, she's relevant to me today. Richa Sakamoto, yeah. I'm not quite following. Okay. So maybe that's why I need to turn that up too. Yeah, because I'm you need to go maybe. listen to it. <laughs> I see. I totally forgot about him because I used to be in love with him when I was five years old. Yeah. So I thought I was going to marry him. Wow. But then... <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened is that... By the time you know, I could, yeah, I had the access to reach Sakamoto. Yeah, he's all. Actually, oh. I was one of the finalists to tour with him. Mm. They had an open audition, mm. but um, I didn't get the the gig. My friend Judy did, but yeah. um, but then by the time I was too old for him, like I was five, <laughs> yeah. and then <laughs> you know, so yeah, I see. After twenty seven, you're too old, right? <laughs> Even if, I don't if he's that. 70 years old. Yeah. So. <laughs> nice. Tokyo, New York. I mean, I, that might be easy. Turn up, turn up. Both. No. Turn up one. You got to turn up. Yeah. <laughs> for the, at the moment. At the moment. Yeah. It could be for any reason. I would say turn up Tokyo. Tokyo. Or turn, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's, the, what's the weather like in Tokyo now? Um, springtime. Springtime, yep. okay. Yeah, okay. Ple probably pleasant. How cold does it get? Depends, because um, Japan is, um, you know, long. Yeah. But um, Tokyo doesn't get cold. Okay. But Japanese, they live like Europeans. They don't really um, <laughs> um, spend a lot of fuels to heat up or... You know, like the mm -hmm. ACs 
okay, they, they, we used to do more, mm-hmm. but now they're just all about conserving. They're yeah. very good at conserving. Well, that's good. Energy. That's very good. So it, Japanese to, you know, houses in Tokyo are so cold <laughs> in wintertime. <laughs> Unbearable. Yeah. Yeah. I see. The last one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Blues in Jade, Black Rain. Those are two of your compositions. You have to choose just one. (laughs) That's hard because they're so different, so opposite. Okay. Um, Well, I could say anything, right? So maybe I'll say Blues in Jade. Okay. Turn up and turn down. All right. But they're both amazing. You know, amazing. I, I listen to both of them. Yeah, they are great, <laughs> great compositions. That's why I chose both of them. <laughs> I wanted to see. Very different. <laughs> yeah, very but different. But I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, it's like sort of like testosterone yeah. versus, I, I don't, I, yeah. I have this sort of male side to mm-hmm, it, you know, mm-hmm. so. You have to yeah. though to survive in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I enjoy in this industry. Yeah. You know, sort of channeling my my male side, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I also enjoy channeling my female yeah. side. So you have that advantage. Yeah. <laughs> Megokura, this has been awesome. This is oh, going to be great. And <laughs> it's, it's a great you. episode. Thank you for having me. Thank you yes, for coming. Enjoy. Thank you. Later. Thank you.